the enthalpy change is called delta H. So basically this is the difference in the energy of the products and the reactants. Now as you can see the products have more energy than the reactants. So actually delta H is greater than zero in this case. It is greater than zero in this case. Yeah. Now actually the problem over here is that uh, this is quite an inaccurate diagram because the reactants do not directly go to the products. So this is something that you will study in your A levels when you do reaction kinetics. But for now you need to know that the reactants don't go directly to the products. So what you need to do is, just a second. Yeah. So what you need to do is you have to make a diagram which looks like this. reaction pathway enthalpy inclusion per mole just a second let me make it a little more neat Now, reactants, we have an intermediate stage over here. You don't have to label this intermediate stage. And then we have products, okay? So reactants, products. So the, in the, the, the cycle actually goes like this, okay? So this is the cycle. This is how it goes. The reactants go to this activated or intermediate state and then they go to the products. But when we calculate the overall enthalpy change, which is this, the overall enthalpy change is still delta H, which is the difference in the energy of the reactants and the products. And since this is an endothermic reaction, a delta H is greater than zero. You can see that the products have more energy than the reactants, so delta H is greater than zero. And this energy gap, uh, let me label it over here actually, not here, but I'll label it um, over here. So this energy gap between the reactants and the intermediate stage is called the activation energy, Ea. So this is how we label activation energy is basically the energy needed to start to initiate this reaction. So activation energy is the energy needed to initiate a reaction. So the, the energy needed to initiate this reaction is Ea over here, which is this energy difference. Delta H is the enthalpy change. Ea is the activation energy. Okay. Now, this is for an endothermic reaction. Now let's make it for an exothermic reaction. For an exothermic reaction, energy, heat energy is released, right? So first, this is for endothermic. I'm just writing endo over here. Thermic, you can write on your own. Now for an exothermic reaction, heat energy is released. So the products have less energy than the reactants. The products have less energy than the reactants. So this is, the, these are the reactants. This is the intermediate stage and this is the products. Now, we'll make something like this, yeah? Now, if you see, delta H is this, this time. It is, this is the enthalpy change of this reaction, and the activation energy is this. So, activation energy is an upward arrow because it is a positive value, obviously, because it is the energy that you need to give, and that's why we make an upward arrow. Enthalpy change in this case is a downward arrow, not an upward arrow because energy is being released. Energy is being released to the surroundings and the, the, therefore the value of delta H is less than zero. The delta H is negative because the products have less energy compared to the reactant. So the enthalpy change, which is delta H is negative. This is for an exothermic reaction. Energy is released in an exothermic reaction and in endothermic reaction. Uh, reactions, the en uh, energy is taken in. So this is how we draw enthalpy profile diagrams, okay? Now, how do we calculate enthalpy changes experimentally? Because you must be thinking that, okay, we have calculated 
we, we know that these are enthalpy changes, but how do we get these values on the graph, right? So 